What's up guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to walk through programming a rock paper scissors shoot game in Python. By the end of the video you'll have something that looks like this. So basically you just type in a guess, the computer makes a random guess, and then the result is printed out. And then the way I set this up is you can keep typing in guesses, so paper, you guess paper, computer guess scissors, sorry you lose, damn it, <laughs> paper. We tied. Let's see if I can win one. Rock, rock, come on, do me, solid. Yay, I win. And one thing to note too is like if you typed in the rock, like something that wasn't valid, like this, it would also tell you invalid, so it wouldn't print out a result for that. This is a good exercise to get more comfortable with your programming skills. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a spin onto this. So after we finish this rock paper scissors shoot game, kind of the traditional way to program it. Uh, I'm going to make another video that's kind of a challenge problem where you take the same game and you write it without any if statements. So that's like where we're headed and I'm going to go through like design decisions a bit about uh, programming different, like programming the same game in multiple different ways or programming the same thing in multiple different ways and the trade-offs of doing both. So let's uh, just get into it. Okay, to start off, open up a new Python file doesn't really matter what you name it, but make sure to include that .py file extension. I'll be programming in Python 3 using Sublime Text 3 as my editor, but you can use whatever editor you prefer. So I always think it's a little bit difficult, like, going from this blank slate we have right here to actually, like, producing my first couple lines of code. So I think it becomes a little bit easier if you give yourselves a, like, a first simple task to do. And I think a good first task is to write a couple lines of code that takes in your input so rock, paper, or scissors, and stores it into a variable, let's say it's called choice. So we have choice equals, and we want this to be equal to whatever we input. And luckily for us, there's a nice, easy, built-in function in Python 3 called input, and that will wait for us to just type something in and then store the result in choice. One thing that's a little bit annoying about Sublime Text is by default, it doesn't work with this input, so I can't just type in the console down here rock let's say and have it actually store that in choice so there's a couple workarounds for this the first is to install this sublime repl and i'll link to this in the description basically i can run the same file through this and now if i type down rock it will take in rock store it in choice and then you know end the program and we can see that it actually took in my choice if i go ahead and say my choice is and then i print out choice as well. If I run this again, rock. My choice is rock. So I got it now. So, so one thing you can do if you're using Sublime Text 3 is sub install Sublime REPL. Another thing you could do is just go ahead and actually run it from idle, which is the default editor that Python comes with. But then the final thing you could do is, if you're familiar with the commit command line, you could cd into the directory, so cd means state uh, change directory, into the directory where your code is stored. So for me, it's in this YouTube folder, then it's in this folder called actual code, and then finally it's in this folder called rps. And the nice thing too when I'm doing this in the command line is if I hit tab, it auto-completes for me. But now I can run python rps.py, and now if I type in rock here, I can also run it here. So these are a couple different options you could do if the default in Sublime Text doesn't work for you. Okay, now that we have our guess stored in a variable, I think the logical next step is let's auto-generate um, a guess for the, or a choice for the computer. So we'll say all the possible choices in rock, paper, scissors are, we're going to make this a list. You have rock, obviously, you have paper, and you have scissors. So we want the computer so computer choice to be one of these three things. And it wouldn't be good for me to just go ahead and say something like choice is zero, because then no matter how many times I run this program, we're always going to choose rock. So ideally, we want it to choose this randomly. So in order to do this, we want to import the random library of Python. And there's now a couple different ways I could do this. The first way is I could use this random library and use a function called randint and index a random position in choices to get my computer choice. So random.randint. 
and I want it to be between 0, which will be this first index, and then the length of choices. So I'm going to say 0, comma, length choices. That will give me the correct positioning. And I can go ahead and do print computer choice now. And I'll make it the same format and say computer choice is comma computer choice. So let's run this again. Rock. And what happens if I run this one more time? I want to just make sure that we get some different options. Rock. What the heck? I don't know if this is my problem or if I'm just getting unlucky. Come on, one more. Python, one current file, rock. Yeah, computer choice is scissors. So it did do it randomly this time. We can kind of validate that. And one thing, I guess, temporarily, I'm going to just comment this out, just make my life easier, and just say my choice is equal to rock, just for the time being. And I run that. Ah, oh, what happened? Yeah, we got some error here. So maybe things weren't working perfectly. Random, random, length choices. And I guess this is inclusive. So I'm guessing choices was, length choices is three. So it gave me three back as one of the choices. So it indexed outside of this. So what I actually have to do is length choices minus one. Then I should be able to run this. And you should see, as you can see down below, that keeps changing every time I rerun it. Every time it flashes, I'm rerunning it. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you get the same thing in a row, but it is pretty random, so that's good to see. All right, now that we have both our choice and a computer choice, we should start comparing the two and, like, printing out who is the winner. So I'm going to say, we can start off with, if our choice equals equals rock, and then let's say if the computer choice, choice, equals equals rock then print it is a tie and we can continue this I can do an else if computer choice equals equals uh, paper I like doing it in order then so if we have rock they have paper then they beat us with paper which I, I honestly like the rules of rock paper scissors shoot if you really think about it why does paper beat rock I don't know, but that's how it is. So print, you lose. Sorry. Computer wins in that case. And then finally, LF, computer choice, equals equals scissors. We want to print, you win. Congrats. Smiley face. All right, so let's test to see if that works. So I'm going to run it. My choice is rock, computer choice is rock, it is a tie. My choice is rock, computer choice is paper, you lose, sorry. And then finally, one more time, hopefully we get scissors eventually. Scissors, you win, congrats, awesome. And also just note, I'm still just hard coding this in just because of the whole sublime text issue with the input. It just makes it easier to test these things quickly. Okay, now that we have the rock, paper, scissors cases working for our choice being rock, Let's duplicate this and make it work for paper and scissors as well. And if you're thinking right now, Keith, bro, like you could do this a lot more efficiently, like and optimize this, I do know that and we will get to that. We'll optimize and clean our code after we just have our like first working version. So I'm going to just copy all these lines and paste them. So now if choice equals equals paper, um, so I'm going to just make it easy on myself and just change the order of these as well. Computer choice equals paper, it is a tie, right? If computer choice equals scissors, then we would lose. And if computer choice equals equals rock, then we would win. And now I could go ahead and change this to paper and just check to make sure all these are working. My choice is paper, computer choice is paper, it is a tie. My choice is paper, computer choice is scissors, you lose, sorry, etc. Uh, and one more time, we can do this again. Oh no, what did I do? We can do this again for the last option we have of choosing, and that is scissors. So I can go ahead and do um, choice equals scissors. And in that case, this would be a tie situation would be scissors. 
Um, the loot you lose case would be rock, and the you win case would be paper. And we'll put all this together, and instead of hard coding this right now, I'm going to comment this out, and we'll actually accept our input. So choice equals input. We're going to run this with Sublime REPL just so we can actually get that input. Run current file. And I'll type in rock. My choice is rock. Computer choice is paper. Let's see if we can run this again. And I'll do paper this time. My choice is paper. Computer choice is paper. It is a tie. That looks good. And then one last sanity check. Let's just see if something... This is not... Oh, what the heck did I do? Um, this is not fully testing everything, but I just want to make sure that it accepts scissors and does something off of that. So scissors, my choice is scissors, computer choice is paper, you win, congrats, smiley face. Cool. And one thing that I'm seeing right now as I do this, it's like kind of weird when I don't have any sort of text uh, to let me know I should make an input, so make your choice. So I'll do something like this. Now if I rerun this, current file, make your choice. Now it's a little bit more obvious to me that, okay, I can type something in now, rock. All right, next, because this is getting kind of annoying that I keep having to run like a new one of these windows every time, we're going to surround our code with a while true. So basically, instead of just running once, if we have a while true around this, uh, it will just continually ask us for a new input. So if I do this while true, then all of the code I used to have, I need to go ahead and indent that to signify that it is inside of this while true. So if I rerun this, make your choice, rock. Make your choice, paper. And so now I can more efficiently test this. And one thing I think would be nice is Let's, at the end of our code, before we get to the next iteration of the loop, let's print out just an empty line just to give ourselves a little bit of separation. Run this again. Make your choice, rock. You win, yay. Uh, scissors. You lose, no. And, all right, so we're, we have a game that's like fully working right now, but we can make this better. So we can make this better in a couple ways. I guess functionality, we, we can make this better and we also can clean our code. One thing that we can prove with the functionality is, let's say I put rock in all caps. It doesn't really know what to do with this. It says my choice is rock, computer choice is rock, but it didn't tell us it is a tie because in our code, we have choice equals equals rock in all lowercase. So to fix this issue, one thing we can do is after we get our choice, we can do choice equals choice dot lower, and that will take the string, string that we got from this input and just make it all lowercase. So I go ahead and run this now. If I do rock like this, you'll see now it lowercase it when it printed it out. And now it like could validly check a, I guess, end game case. Taking this a step farther, we probably want a way to tell the user if they type in something that isn't rock, paper, or scissors that they have an invalid guess. So that will be the next thing we do. So the way we can do this is we can add another if statement outside of all of these choices. And I'm going to add a statement that just says, if choice in choices. So basically it's saying, you know, if the choice that we made right up here actually is exists in this list, then it's valid. And we can like go to one of these cases. Otherwise, what we'll want to do is else print like invalid choice. Try again. So let's see if this works. I'm going to close out these tools. Uh, this is annoying having <laughs> to do this. Uh, run current file. Make your choice. Rock. That works, right? Now if I say da 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 and I run that, 
My choice is blah, 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 blah. Computer choice is scissors. Invalid choice, try again. So now I can try rock again. And as you can see, it starts working again. Cool, so we fixed that little issue. The next thing we'll go ahead and do is, if you look at all of our code, one sec. If we look at all of our code here, like in all these if and elif sense, uh, statements, this definitely could be cleaned up. There's there's code that's unnecessary here. Um, and I think it would be good for us to try to uh, make this a little bit neater. And one thing also to think about is my next video is going to be on programming this game with out, if, and elif, and else. So like, try to think about, start thinking about like, how the heck would you do this? We need, we need if and elf, if and elif and else so often in this, this current version. But okay, let's start optimizing. And the, the first thing that I see we do is we always, if there's computer choice is equal to our choice right here, it is a tie. We can simplify this. So we don't even actually need any of these lines. So I'm going to delete all of these it is a tie lines. So I just deleted three if statements with like a, a message inside. And what we can do instead is we can just say if choice equals equals computer choice. And that will encompass all three of those examples. I can now print um, it is a tie. Cool. Tools. We'll build that. Just check, make sure that it works. Python, run current file. Oh no, what did I do? Elif, computer choice. Oh, now because I deleted these if statements, this doesn't become an elif. This is still, these all have to be ifs. Tools. rock. I'm going to just keep going until I get a tie. Yep, still works. That's awesome. And let's see if it worked with scissors as well. Scissors. <laughs> if I can get another scissors. Yep, still works with all of them. So that's cool. That's one way we can simplify it. Uh, other ways we could simplify it is, I guess we can be, because we should, we always will get a valid, I guess, choice here as the computer player. Actually, one thing I can do here is instead of doing the indexing solution, there's another way we can actually do this. There's another function in random. If you look at the random library documentation, you'll find this, but you can actually do random.choice, choices, and then we don't even actually have to get an index. So this would also work for the computer choice, just another way to write that. Maybe a little bit neater, maybe not. Um, I guess it's kind of up to you. But I guess something that I can do here is and this is also kind of, I would say, up to you, is instead of doing elif, I could just do else here because I know that this is the only other case because we've already taken care of the tie case. So it's either paper or the other case would be, um, in this case, would be scissors. And that can be just encompassed by an else. So I'm going to just do that for all of them. Some people might say that it's better to do it, actually be explicit like this, just because if there's some sort of weird bug that comes in, but uh, I'll let you guys make that decision. So now we, we, we cleaned up the code a bit, I would say. Okay, so at this point I would say that we have our fully functioning rock, paper, scissors, shoot game. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I did in this video, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, make sure to throw it a thumbs up, and also make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to check out the next video I'm posting, which is going to be the same exact game. But this next time, instead of <laughs> using all these if statements, we'll be doing using absolutely zero if statements in our code. So it's kind of an interesting problem, like being able to design a game in a completely like different way. And there's definitely trade-offs and, uh, I guess, perks of both implementations. So make sure to check that out. Um, I think that's all I have. Thanks again for watching, guys and peace out.